Welcome. I welcome you to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture we shall be studying three very important technical terms Anga, Bha and Pada, internal Pada. These three technical terms are defined in the Saudhnya Sutras in the text of Ashtadhyayi. We study these three concepts after we have studied the technical terms which are core as far as the sentence construction is concerned in Sanskrit, namely the Karaka and the Vibhakti. We have also studied some more Saudhnyas in various other contexts throughout this course. Today we shall focus on these three terms, Anga, Bha and Pada, the internal Pada. So if we start the derivation process of the sentence generation, here is the Artha that first of all is part of the cognitive apparatus of the speaker. There are six sentence meanings, Ram goes to a village, Ram goes to a school and so on. When this data set of meanings is analyzed, we find the following constituents that there is an action of going, Ram and Mohan are the performers. village and school these are the destinations and then the second scenario is <clears throat> that there is an, the action of seeing described in which Ram and Mohan are the performers and the village and a school they are the objects they are being seen. Once these meaning constituents are available to us we then go select the words which express these meaning relations as well as the meanings. The action of going is expressed by the word gamma. Performer is expressed by uh, visarga also known as su in combination with t. Ram and Mohan are the meanings which are expressed by Rama and Mohana in Sanskrit. Destination is expressed by ma or am, a village and a school is expressed by grammar and shala. This is about the first scenario. The second scenario is about the action of seeing. In order to express this meaning we have drisha, performer is uh, visarga, technically su in Paninian grammar in combination with t. Rama and Mohana get expressed by Rama and Mohana. Object is expressed by Ma, Am. A village and a school is expressed by Grama and Shala. And then we start the derivation process of this entire sentence. First we start with the verbal root Gama and then there are these vacant generic slots which then get filled by the respective suffixes. After the verbal root gamma, we add t. It is very important process. The verbal root is gamma to which is added the suffix t and then we add su in other brackets and then we add the prakriti left hand side part in those other brackets like here. After we finish with Gamati, we add Su and then this slot is filled in by Rama later on and same thing we do with the rest. So then we have 
gamma plus t plus rama plus su plus gamma plus um. Then we proceed further by applying certain other rules we get gamma plus a plus t plus rama plus a plus gamma plus um. Now this a is the cause which causes this gamma to be replaced by gacha. So we have gacha plus a plus t plus rama plus a plus gamma plus um. Then certain other rules apply and then we get gachati ramaha gramam. And finally we apply the rules of sandhi at the sentence level. So we get the sentence gachati ramo gramam. This is how the sentence gets derived. It is important to note this derivation process because the three terms that we are going to study, they play an important role in this derivation. So after having done this process, we get the following shabdas in order to express the arthas with which we started the process. So Ram goes to a village is expressed by gramam gachati ramaha or gachati ramo gramam as we saw earlier and so on. And then we have these six shabdas sentences ready as far as the shabdakasha is concerned in extension of the arthakasha. And then this causes the entire derivation process and ends in the auditory sounds being produced through the oral cavity. Now in this particular data set which comprised of the sentences, we observe the following SUPs, 21 SUPs divided into 7 rows and 3 columns, so aujas, um, auas, etc., 21 such suffixes. These are called SUPs and these are the words which are part of the data set that is described earlier, Ramaha, Rama, Ramaha. These are called Subantas because there is a SUP coming at the end. So Ramaha has Rama which is the Pratipadika and Aha, Su, the SUP coming at the end. Ramam has got Rama, a Pratipadika and Am coming at the end. So all these are Subantas. These are part of the data set that we saw earlier. Similarly, we also have the Subantas of this kind and I will read this in detail because this we are going to study in this today's lecture. Raja, Rajanau, Rajanaha Prathama, Rajanam, Rajanau. Radnyah Dvitiya, Radnya, Rajabhyam Rajabhi Tritiya, Radnye, Rajabhyam Rajabhya Chaturthi, Radnya, Rajabhyam Rajabhya Panchami, Radnya, Radnyo, Radnyam Shashti, Radni Rajani, Radnyo, Rajasu Saptami. If you carefully study these forms, there are three patterns that emerge as far as the formal similarity is concerned and it is precisely in order to explain these three patterns that Panini had to use the technical terms bh as well as internal pada which are part of the explanation of what is called an anga. So let us look at what is an anga but before that here are some other forms, here are some suffixes, these are called things. They are also part of the data set described earlier. So we have already seen this, tiptas, g, etc., 18 suffixes and they generate these 18 forms, nayati, nayataha, nayanti, etc. This example is taken primarily because the verbal root ni is generally normally decline in all 18 forms. Gacha will have only 9 primarily, gachati gachataha. That is why nayati is taken as an example to illustrate the tinganta forms. 
So, let us study what is an anger, a very important technical term used by Panini. It is defined at 1.4.13, first Adhyaya, fourth Pada, thirteenth Sutra, first chapter, fourth sub chapter, and thirteenth Sutra. And the Sutra is Yasmat Pratyaya Vidhis Tadadi Pratyaye Angam. Angam is the technical term, the rest is the definition of anger, what is called an anger. The most important word here primarily is Pratyaya Vidhi. Pratyaya Vidhi means the prescription of a Pratyaya, of a suffix. Yasmat indicates the word from which this Pratyaya is prescribed. The next important word is tadadi. The pronoun tat here refers to this yat, the element to which a pratyaya is added. So tadadi, an element beginning with this element is called anga when the pratyaya follows. So, this definition of anger has got several important words. We did not pay attention to the word pratyaye. Now, let us pay attention to this word pratyaye. This pratyaye is in 7 1, indicating immediately before. What this also indicates is that. Pratyaya is a very important condition. In fact, it is an essential condition for a particular verbal element to be termed anga. In fact, you can also say that a verbal element is termed anga only with reference to a pratyaya. No verbal element can be absolutely called an anger. A verbal element is called anger or termed anger if and only if in relation with a pratyaya. So, immediately before a pratyaya, that element obviously immediately before a pratyaya in the derivation process, what you are supposed to have is a prakriti. So, this yasmat refers to that prakriti, prakriti word and then this pratyaya should have been prescribed after, immediately after this prakriti element. So, pratyaya vidhi. And then you start with this prakriti element and then count the verbal element that begins with this prakriti element and goes on up to this pratyaya. And that verbal element then is called an anga. So, we can translate this in the following manner. That verbal element x at the beginning of which comes y. So, tadadi, prakriti, to which is added the suffix by prescription pratyaya vidhis. So, immediately before that suffix, that verbal element is called anger. I repeat, that verbal element x at the beginning of which comes y, that is a prakriti, to which is added that suffix by prescription and not just placing side by side, it needs to be prescribed immediately before that suffix, that verbal element x is called an anger. So, if we have the case where you take y as the initial stage of derivation and to which 
a particular sutra prescribes the addition of a pratyaya. So a pratyaya is added over here. Now, you will ask a question, what is an anga? And then obviously the next sub question that needs to be asked is with reference to which pratyaya? So if somebody says with reference to this pratyaya, then you can say that, well, this pratyaya is added after this prakriti y. So beginning with this y and immediately before this pratyaya, whatever comes in between is called an anga. So y is the only part that comes from y up to this pratyaya over here. Therefore, y is called an anga. So in this case, y is x, y is anga. Now, if we look at the next example, when this particular stage is expanded, as is the case with the Paninian derivational system, so this pratyaya is added after y. Now, in the environment of this pratyaya and this prakriti, another pratyaya is added, which is this. This pratyaya is added, added to a verbal root y, for example. So this pratyaya is also added to y. Now once again we ask a question, what is an anga? The sub question to this is with reference to which pratyaya and we say with reference to this pratyaya, the rightmost pratyaya. And then we have to now think about the term anga. The sutra comes to our help and it tells us that first of all, Think about the prakriti to which this pratyaya was added and that prakriti is this y. Now begin from y and come up to this pratyaya, immediately before this pratyaya. Whichever verbal element comes in between and this y, all that element is to be termed anga. So y is the prakriti to which this pratyaya is added. So we start with y and come up to this pratyaya. So y plus pratyaya. So this entire part will be called an anga. In this case, y plus pratyaya is that x, is that anga. We are going to take a few examples to illustrate this point and this particular explanation of the term anga. But before we go there, let me reiterate the most important aspect in the term anger, namely that it is relative, it is not absolute. An element can be called anger only with respect to a pratyaya, only with reference to a particular pratyaya. You have to specify that pratyaya with reference to which an element is being termed an anger. Let us look at the example. Let us take the same derivation process which we saw earlier. And here we have gamma plus t plus rama plus su plus gramma plus am as one step of derivation. If we study this closely, we will see that gamma is a y, a prakriti, to which is added a suffix t. And immediately before this t, the verbal element that begins with y is gum obviously and therefore gum is an anga with reference to t. Similarly, if you look at the second word, rama is a y prakriti to which is added a suffix su. So immediately before this su, the verbal element that begins with y is rama and therefore rama is an anga with reference to su. Similarly, in grammar plus am, grammar is a y prakriti to which is added a suffix am. So immediately before this am, the verbal element that begins with y is grammar and therefore grammar is an anga with reference to am. This is how we can explain anga in all these three words. The prakriti is primarily in this case become an anga and they are all shown in green. Now let us take the second example. 
And here we take the next step in the derivation process of the sentence that we saw earlier. Now here we have an additional suffix added after a verbal root. This is that additional suffix a. Uh. Remember this t is added after gamma, this a uh is also added after gamma as far as the sutra prescription is concerned. Now what happens in this case is gamma is a y prakriti to which is added a suffix t as was before. Now immediately before this t the verbal element that begins with y is gamma plus a and therefore gamma plus a is an anga with reference to t. This is the difference now. So this entire gamma plus a which is shown in green becomes an anga with reference to t. What happens to this a suffix? What is the anga with reference to this a? Here is the answer. Gamma is a prakriti y to which is added a suffix a. Immediately before this a, the verbal element that begins with y or prakriti is gamma and therefore gamma is an anga with reference to a. Only gamma will become green in that case indicating that this is an anga with reference to a. But with reference to t, gamma plus a is an anga. So what comes out of this is that anga is a technical term which is given to a verbal element always with reference to a pratyaya. You cannot talk about an anga in absolute terms. It has to be with reference to a pratyaya. So if I ask you describe an anga to me in this particular context, you should look for the pratyaya that I am referring to. The next question should come with reference to which pratyaya. So x is an anga with reference to what? With reference to which pratyaya? That pratyaya needs to be specified. If that pratyaya is mentioned as t, then gum plus a becomes an anga. If that pratyaya is a, then only gum becomes the anga. What is the function of the term anga? What happens after a, an element is called anga? So rules stated in 5 sub chapters namely 6.4 and 7, 1 to 4 that means the entire 7th chapter. All these 5 sub chapters have rules or sutras which operate on the anga. Thus at the stage gamma plus a plus t 7377 applies to the anga and replaces gamma by gacha. So we get gacha plus a plus t as the next step in the derivation after gamma plus a plus t. So after getting gacha plus a plus t we join them together and get the form gacha t. In case of gacha plus a plus me with reference to me this gacha and a this entire unit is called anga then 73101 applies to the anga and lengthens the final vowel of this anga which is this a and so we get gacha plus a plus me and finally we get the form gacha me. So in this particular form the verbal root and the suffix gets lengthened. In this case it does not, in this case only the root gets substituted. So root substitution and lengthening seem to be the two immediate functions of the term anga. Here are some other examples and these examples are taken from the tinganta forms cited earlier. So thus at this stage ni plus a plus t where we are focusing on a as the suffix with reference to this a ni becomes an anga so it is shown in green. Now in this case the 7384 applies to the anga and replaces ni by ne, ne by naya. So we get naya plus a plus t. As the next step in derivation we join these together and we get the form naya t. So 7384 applies to the anga and replaces ni by ne 
then by the application of some other rules may becomes naya. So, we get the next step naya plus a plus p and when we join these together we get the verbal form naya t. In case of naya plus a plus me we focus on me and with reference to me naya plus a is termed as anga. So, 73101 applies to the anga and lengthens the final vowel a over here and so we get naya plus a plus me the final form is naya me. Here are some other examples explaining what happens to the anga. So, if you have rama plus ghai, so we take a verbal root rama to which we add the suffix ghai and we get the form rama. Now, with reference to the suffix ghai, rama is an anga. When we derive the verbal form kartavya, we take the verbal root kru, add the suffix tavya to it. With reference to tavya, verbal root kru becomes an anga by application of the definition of anga. Similarly, when we have kru plus t, t is a suffix added after the verbal root kru. So, with reference to t, kru becomes an anga in this case. Now, when we have kru plus t, we have u as, as another suffix added after verbal root kru. Now, with reference to u, kru is an anga. So, with reference to t, y which is this prakriti kru, beginning with it up to this t namely kru plus u this entire unit becomes an anga. Now after these words are derived, so for example rama plus ghai gives us rama. Now we add the suffix su to it to make it a pada. So rama plus su is the next step in the derivation process in which su is a suffix added after the prakriti rama. So now rama becomes an anga. Similarly, kartavya was derived after kru plus tavya to which we add su. This is a suffix, this is a prakriti. So with reference to su, this entire unit kartavya becomes an anga. Similarly, kru plus t and we get the form kriti and so we add the suffix su to it. With reference to su, the entire kriti is called an anga. When we look at the verbal derivation kru plus u plus t and we get the verbal form karoti. Remember karoti is not an anga as it cannot be a prakriti to which is added a suffix. Karoti in fact is a pada with only one minor exception which we need not study over here. But in general karoti can never become an anga because it cannot become a prakriti. It is a pada. The next technical term that we study today is bha. So, what is a bha? Bha is in fact an anga of a special kind. Pratipadika plus pratyaya in this format, if the pratipadika is of a masculine or feminine gender, then omit the first 5 pratyayas stated in 412. Now, from the remaining ones, from 412 up to 54160, a vowel beginning amongst the consonants, y beginning pratyaya follows, then this pratipadika is called bha. This is the process followed to term a pratipadika bha. Let us redo it. So, if we have the situation where pratipadika plus pratyaya is seen. In this case, if the pratipadika is of masculine or feminine gender, then we omit the first 5 pratyayas stated in 412. Look at the remaining pratyayas from 412 up to 54160. Amongst them, if a pratyaya over here in this slot is a vowel beginning pratyaya and amongst the consonants, if this pratyaya is a year beginning, then this pratipadika is called bha. This is the sutra which defines bha, yachi bham, 1418. And the meaning I have already stated to you, a pratipadika is termed bha when it is immediately followed 
by vowel beginning suffixes as well as suffixes that begin with y amongst all the suffixes stated in the section 4122254160 minus the first 5 after a masculine and feminine root and 1 slash 3 and 2 slash 3 after a neuter root. So, all blue marked suffixes in the next slide cause the pratipadika to be termed bh. All rules stated in the section 64129 up to the end of 64 that is 175 apply to bh, they are governed by the adhikara bhasya. Here are the sup suffixes with the markings for bh. So, these are the first 5 suffixes omit them begin with the sixth one and note down the vowel beginning suffixes. So, as is a vowel beginning a, a, as, as, os, am, e, os these are the vowel beginning suffixes. So, when they follow the previous pratipadika will be termed bh, but in case of bhyambhis, bhyambhyas, bhyambhyas and sup which are consonant beginning suffixes and amongst the consonant beginning they do not begin with y, they begin with bh and s. Therefore, when they follow the previous pratipadika will not be called bh. Therefore, these suffixes are shown in red, they do not cause the term bh to apply to the previous pratipadika. Similarly, these suffixes which are shown in black, they also do not cause the previous pratipadika to be called bh. So, here are the examples. So, if we take marut and add the suffix as to it which is 2 slash 3. Now, this suffix as is a vowel beginning suffix and sixth suffix stated in 412. So, applying the definition marut is called bh. So, we get the form marutaha as it is. Similarly, if we have rajan plus as at this stage Rajan is termed bh and hence 64134 applies which deletes a in Rajan. Rajan is called bh because this as is 2 slash 3 and this is a vowel beginning suffix and therefore Rajan becomes bh and then 64134 applies and deletes this a over here. So, we get Rajni plus as by the application of 64134, then these two join together give us radnyas and then finally radnyaha which is 2 slash 3 onwards. Radnyaha, radnya, radnye, radnyaha, radni, radnyoho, radnyam. You see this a gets deleted in all these forms. So, here are all the forms with bh marking. So, we have Raja, Rajanav, Rajanaha, Rajanam, Rajanav, first 5 forms different. Look at the 6th form, Radnyaha, then 3 slash 1, 4 slash 1, 5 slash 1, the entire 6th case 7 slash 1 and 7 slash 2, A is deleted. So, these suffixes in these slots they cause the Pratipadika Rajan to be termed as Bh, whereas in the suffix in the forms which are marked with red color, the pratipadika is not termed as bh because the suffixes are consonant beginning and even then they are not beginning with y. Now, what happens to these red marked padas? In order to explain these forms, Panini has defined internal pada. Once again let us see how a pratipadika is termed as pada also to be known as internal pada. So, we have the same situation as we had for the term bh where a pratipadika is a prakriti to which is added a pratyaya. In this case if the pratipadika is of masculine or feminine gender omit the first 5 pratyaya stated in 412. Now, from the remaining ones from 412 up to 54160 a consonant beginning pratyaya follows 
consonant beginning minus y pratyaya follows then the pratyapadika is called pad we call this internal pad so any consonant beginning pratyaya minus y beginning and then that pratyaya causes the pratyapadika to be called a pad this is the sutra swadishu asarvanam sthane 1417 and what this means is a pratyapadika is termed pad when it is immediately followed by any suffix which begins with a consonant of course minus y stated in the section 412 to 54160 minus the first five after a masculine and feminine root and 1/3 and 2/3 after a neuter root so all red mark suffixes cause the pratyapadika to be termed pad in the following slide so <clears throat> the first five which are marked in black ink they are to be omitted now within the remaining suffixes over here the ones which are showed in blue they cause the bh term to be applied to the pratyapadika now these are the consonant beginning suffixes seven bhyambhis 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 and sup seven suffixes they begin with a consonant and that consonant is not y therefore now these suffixes will cause the pratyapadika to which they are added to be termed pad for example <clears throat> we have marut plus bhyam bhyam is 3/2 or 4/2 or 5/2 bhyam is a consonant beginning suffix eighth one stated in 412 so now marut is not called bh it is called pad and so a239 which has pad mentioned as a necessary condition applies and we get the substituted by the and so we get marud plus bhyam finally we get the form marud bhyam similarly we have rajan plus bhyam and bhyam is a consonant beginning suffix eighth one stated in 412 so rajan is now not called bh it is called pad so 827 which has pad mentioned as a necessary condition applies and we get raj plus bhyam where na is deleted by 827 and finally we get the form rajabhyam so once again let us take a relook at all these subanta pad forms of rajan so here are the first five raja rajanav rajanah rajanam rajanau we omit these five and now look at the next forms amongst which the ones that are marked in blue they are derived with the help of the term bh assigned to the pratyapadika because the suffixes over here they are vowel beginning if we look at the forms that are marked with red ink rajabhyam rajabhi rajabhyam rajabhya rajabhyam rajabhya and rajasu we have the suffixes beginning with consonants bhyam bhi bhyam bhya bhyam bhya and su so they cause the pratyapadika rajan to be termed as pad as a result 827 applies and deletes this n over here so we get these forms rajabhyam etc what is clear from all these forms is that there are three patterns clearly visible the first one raja rajanav rajanah rajanam rajanau where raja as a form is commonly available in all the five then amongst the rest radmya is the common form available in the blue and raj as a common form is available in the red ones these are the three commonly available patterns as far as the pratyapadika is concerned in order to account for these three patterns panini had to devise these technical terms namely bh and pad <clears throat> let us look at the contrastive examples so when we have marut plus as 2/3 as is a vowel beginning suffix and sixth suffix stated in 412 so marut is called bh and we get the form marutah 
But when it comes to Marut plus Bhyam 3 slash 2, Bhyam is a consonant beginning suffix 8 one stated in 412. So, Marut is now not called Bha, Marut is rather called Pada, Marut plus Bhyam that is the output and so we get the form Marud Bhyam as was shown earlier. Similarly, Rajan plus As, As is a vowel beginning suffix. So, Rajan is called Bha which triggers 64134 to apply which deletes A, we get the form Rajnya As, Radnyas, Radnyaha. And in contrast, we have Rajan plus Bhyam 3 slash 2 and Rajan gets termed Pada because of which 8 to 7 applies which deletes Na. So, we get the form Raja plus Bhyam and finally Raja Bhyam. This is how the terms Anga, Pada and Bha apply. To summarize, the, the three technical terms Anga, Bha and Pada are unique creations on the part of the Paninian grammar. The term internal pada also shows some common features of finished pada. They help formulate a rule based system to account for pattern variation visible in the forms. These three terms form the core of the treatment of morphology as it is called in the modern linguistics in Paninian grammar. Before we close, here is the Mangala Charana of today taken from Brihat Paribhasha Vritti of Sira Deva. The Mangala Charana is Spura Dabhinava Raga Bhaskarabha Pragalbha Prasabha Shamita Dosha Spheeta Salloka Chakra Vihita Hita Vichara Jadya Jatopa Shantyai Prabhavatu Paribhasha Vrittira Sevita Isha. I repeat, Spura Dabhinava Raga Bhaskarabha Pragalbha Prasabha Shamita Dosha Spheeta Salloka Chakra Vihita Hita Vichara Jadya Jato Pashantyai Prabhavatu Paribhasha Vritti Ra Sevita Isha. And the five sutras of today taken from 7.2 Sichi Vridhi Parasmai Padeshu Atol Rantasya Vadavraja Halanta Syachaha Neti Mhantakshanashvasajagru Nishvyeditam. I repeat, Sichivridhi Parasmai Padeshu Atol Rantasya Vadavraja Halanta Syachaha Neti Mhantakshanashvasajagru Nishvyeditam. Thank you for your attention.